Let's learn what it means for an estimator to be unbiased. So what is an estimator? Well, in statistics, we want to estimate a parameter, theta. Suppose we have a way of estimating theta from the data, right? So theta hat, our estimate, is a function of the data, right? We put data in and we get out an estimate. And since theta hat is a function of the data, it is random and thus has a distribution. Every time we get new data, we will get a different value of the estimate. So for example, the sample mean X bar is an estimator. And one common parameter we often want to estimate is the population mean mu. And we estimate it with the sample mean X bar. So we say that X bar is an estimator of mu. So an estimator is a random variable. Every time I sample data, I get a new value of the estimator. And this means that estimators, like X bar, have a distribution, which describes how often different values occur. And ideally, we would like X bar to be close to mu, but obviously it can't always be exactly equal to mu. One thing about random variables is they have averages. Since X bar is a random variable, it has an average or an expected value. We can see here that we have the distribution of X bar, and this red line is the expected value, the average of that distribution. And this means that if we use X bar to estimate mu, on average, X bar will be equal to this red value. And it would be really nice if this long run average was the actual value we want to learn about, which is mu. So I want the average of the estimator to be the true value, right? So the goal of X bar is to estimate the true mean mu. It would be nice if the expected value of X bar was mu. And if the expected value of an estimator theta hat is equal to its true value theta, then we call the estimator unbiased. Okay, so X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. And why is that? That's because E of X bar is equal to mu. Okay, so we see we still have this red line here, which is the expected value of X bar. And we have this blue line, which is our parameter value mu that we're trying to estimate. Because the red and the blue lines line up, that means that our estimator is unbiased. So whenever the expected value of the estimator in red and the true value blue line up, the estimator is unbiased. For example, suppose we want to learn about the average height in the population, which unbeknownst to us is 66 inches. Then if we take a sample of a few people and use their average height X bar to estimate mu, on average, X bar will be equal to 66. Now that doesn't mean it's always going to be 66, right? It's random. It has a distribution, which we can see here, but on average, it will be correct. Similarly, P hat, the sample proportion is an unbiased estimator of P, the true proportion. So suppose we want to learn about the proportion of people who like to dance in the population, which unbeknownst to us is 60%. Now, if we take a sample of a few people, the proportion of them who like to dance will, on average, be 60%, right? So the estimator, on average, will be the true value that we want to find. And we can see that in the picture here. We have our distribution of the random variable p hat, which is our estimator, right? This has a distribution. It's not always going to be 60%. But on average, the two values will line up, and we will be able to estimate the true value of 60%. Now, let's look at something that is not unbiased. So when we estimate the variance, why do we put an n minus 1 in the denominator here? And we do so because this estimator of the variance is unbiased. Okay, We can see the distribution of the sample variance here. And we can see that the parameter we want to estimate and the expected value of this estimator line up. But if the denominator in the sample variance was n instead of n minus 1, and we'll often denote this by sigma hat instead of uh, s, if the denominator is n, then we have a bias estimator. The expected value is not equal to the true value of sigma squared. And we can see that in this picture here. The uh, blue value, the parameter sigma squared, and the expected value of the estimator in red do not line up. So this is a biased estimator, okay? And we can compare that again to the sample variance S squared, which is unbiased. They do line up. Now, sometimes bias isn't really the worst thing. Our goal is to estimate the parameter as closely as possible. So this estimator on top here is unbiased. The blue and the red line up. And this estimator on bottom is biased. They do not line up. However, the estimator on top has a large variance, meaning it's sometimes really far away from the true value, right? So this uh, has wide tails, right? So sometimes we get estimates that are here, which is very far away from what we want over here. But this estimator on bottom has a small variance. And even though on average, it's a little off, 
um, it doesn't have values that are so far away from the mean like the estimator on top does. So bias is only one thing we care about. We also want a low variance. And this is called the bias variance trade-off. So sometimes we might choose a slightly biased estimator with a lower variance over an unbiased estimator with a large variance. And especially in modern statistics, unbiasedness is sometimes considered less important. So to recap, estimators are functions of data that attempt to estimate a parameter. Since they are functions of data, they are random variables that have distributions. Random variables have expected values. Intuitively, we would like the estimator to, on average, be its true value. And we call this property being unbiased, where the expected value of theta hat is equal to theta. So some common estimators we know are unbiased. Uh, X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. The sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the true mean. And the sample proportion is an unbiased estimator of the true population proportion. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.